cooperative banks and their existence can be traced back to 1904 with the emergence of Cooperative Societies Act of 1904. These institutions were set up with the intent of serving the rural institutions engaged in productive activities. The main concern was to provide a setup to solve the issues related to agricultural financing and credit and to eliminate the long existing unorganized money market which exploited the rural poor by charging exorbitant rates of interest. The cooperative banks were later introduced into the mainstream financial framework with the view to enhance development through community based participation. These institutions today exist alongside the commercial banking system under cater and cater to both urban and rural credit requirements. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the functioning of cooperative banks in India, classify the structure and understand the key challenges faced by these institutions, know the policy frameworks that exist for the cooperative banks. Let us first discuss a brief introduction of cooperative banks. Cooperative banks and their existence can be traced back to 1904 with the emergence of Cooperative Societies Act of 1904. These institutions were set up with the intent of serving the rural institutions engaged in productive activities. The main concern was to provide a setup to solve the issues related to agricultural financing and credit and to eliminate the long existing unorganized money market which exploited the rural poor by charging exuberant rates of interest. The cooperative banks were later introduced into the mainstream financial framework with a view to enhance development through community-based participation. The federal structure of cooperative banks can be classified on the basis of their presence at village, district and state level. Reserve Bank of India is an apex institution in the hierarchy of cooperative banking in India followed by National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development called NABARD and National Cooperative Bank of India that is NCBI which supervises, monitors and supply funds and promote the cooperative system. State cooperative banks and the state land development banks are the state level institutions positioned at the top in the federal structure in terms of lending. SCBs are the most important institutions after RBI, NABARD and NCBI as they perform important act of providing credit by ways of deposits and loans to central cooperative banks that is CCBs through RBI. They also help in transferring surplus funds of one CCB to others. SCBs also generate independent funds which they pass over to smaller institutes or primary credit societies where CCBs are inaccessible or absent. SCBs are present in almost all states and deal in short and medium term credit for seasonal agricultural activities and non-agriculture purposes like pump sets, repairs etc. The SLDBs are interested with long term credit through issue of 
ordinary debentures and special development debentures. The land development banks don't accept deposits and hence lack the true sense of a bank. The CCBs belong to tier 2 of the cooperative credit system and majorly extend loans to primary societies. Their lending and advances are also short and medium term in nature for agriculture and some of the medium term loans are meant for rescheduling. CCBs operate at district level along with central land development banks that is CLDBs. The lower tier institutions are shareholders of upper tier institutes and the funds raised become the part of their share capital. Tier 3 institutes namely primary agricultural credit societies that is PACS, primary land development banks that is PLDBs and the branches of SLDBs operate at village level. PACS directly deal with farmers and form the base of cooperative credit and the financial soundness determines the soundness of tier 2 and tier 1 institutes. The advances also include arrangements for farm equipment, distribution and marketing of consumer goods and construction of go-downs. The urban cooperative banks that is UCBs do not belong to the federal system of credit, rather operate like a commercial bank. Their operations are confined to the metro cities, semi and urban centers with credit facilities for small industrial units retailers and professionals. Long term credit in rural area is provisioned by institutions namely state cooperative agriculture and rural development banks that is SCARDBs and primary cooperative agriculture and rural development banks that is PCARDBs. SCARDBs and PCARDBs function in a similar fun fashion as LCDBs and PLDBs respectively. This figure explains the classification of cooperative institutions at different levels. Reserve Bank of India is the apex institution in the hierarchy of cooperative bank in India followed by National Bank for Agricultural and Rural Development and National Cooperative Bank of India NCBI, which supervise, monitor, supply funds and promote the cooperative system. State cooperative banks or SCBs and the state land development banks are the state level institutions positioned at the top in the federal structure in terms of lending. SCBs perform important act of providing credit by way of deposits and loans to central cooperative banks CCBs through RBI. The SLDBs are entrusted with long term credit through issue of ordinary debentures and special development debentures. The land development banks don't accept deposits and hence lack the true sense of a bank. The CCBs belong to tier 2 of the cooperative credit system and majorly extend loans to primary societies. Their lending and advances are also short and medium term in nature for agriculture and some of the medium term loans are meant for rescheduling. CCBs operate at district level along with central land development banks CLDBs. Tier 3 institutes namely primary agricultural credit societies PACS 
primary land development banks, PLDBs, and the branches of SLDBs operate at village level. The urban cooperative banks, UCBs, do not belong to the federal system of credit, rather operate like a commercial bank. Their operations are confined to the metro cities, semi and urban centers with credit facilities for small industrial units, retailers and professionals. The proportion of cooperative credit offices as a ratio of commercial banking outspaces the latter. But in terms of overall transaction, cooperative banks are outnumbered by commercial banks in 1994-95 deposits and credit extended by cooperatives were 14 and 29 percent of the commercial banks respectively. State Bank of India that is SBI alone had an excess deposit as compared to entire cooperative banking system. A total of deposits by the cooperative institutions were negligible during 1950-51 which saw a sudden rise over the next couple of decades. In 1994-95 the deposit figures of the institutions were as follows. Rupees 412.39 crore SCBs Rupees 51.56 crore CCBs and rupees 14.05 crore UCBs. CCBs were most important and ranked above all cooperatives in terms of deposits, but this scenario reversed as the compound growth of UCBs exceeded that of other cooperatives. As per March 2013, UCBs had an overall deposit of Rs. 276900 crore of deposits, Rs. 86700 crore in SCBs, Rs. 176800 crore zero zero crore in DCC rupees five zero three zero zero crore in PACS as compared to these institutions SCARDBs and PCARDBs had lesser amount of deposits to the tune of rupees 1100 crore and rupees 500 crore respectively. Borrowings as a percentage of deposits were unstable between 18 between 1985-86 and 2002-3. The ratio fell from 72.27% to 32.26% for SCBs. The ratio of borrowings to deposits was stable for CCBs at around 48% and fell to 24.88% in 2002-3. PACS had a very high ratio of around 686.53% in 1985-86 which fell to 380% in 1994-95. The UCBs appeared to be most stable with a very low ratio of borrowings to deposit of around 1.56% in 2002-3 from 
43 percent in 1985-86. The Kusna Committee on Agriculture Credit pointed out that these institutions, especially PACS, were inefficient in channelization of their deposits and hence resorted to excessive borrowings. LDBs which don't accept deposits use debenture based borrowings. Their overall borrowings were rupees 2854 crore in 1985-86. SLDBs had raised an amount of rupees 552 crore and rupees 616 crore successively from 1988 to 1990 by issuing debentures to NABARD and central government. This was followed by further issue to institutions like LIC, SBI and other central and state government bodies. The absolute borrowing of SCBs and PACSs in March 2013 stood at rupees 42,700 crore and rupees 88,800 crore respectively. Let us discuss the growth and performance of cooperative banks. The proportion of cooperative credit offices as a ratio of commercial banking outpaces the latter. But in terms of overall transaction, cooperative banks are outnumbered by commercial banks. There were around 297 commercial banks till 1970s, whereas 92,571 cooperative banks existed, including PACS. As per RBI's report in March 2013, there were 93,550 rural cooperatives against 1,606 urban cooperatives. 92,432 PACs and 31 SCBs with 370 CCBs. CCBs were most important and ranked above all cooperatives in terms of deposits, but the scenario reversed as the compound growth of UCBs exceeded that of other cooperatives. As per March 2013, USBs have an overall deposit of Rs. 2,76,900 crore of deposits, Rs. 86,700 crore in SCBs, Rs. 1,76,800 crore in DCCBs and Rs. 50,300 in PACS. Let us discuss the features of cooperating banks. With the objective of self-help, mutual help and cooperation, these are an organized structure with well-managed system. The cooperative banks are not profit-oriented and operate at break-even situation. Working of a cooperative bank is totally similar to that of a commercial bank with exact facilities of deposits, loans, remittance and credit made available to the participants. Outlook or target market of these institutes has remained focused. Agriculture and rural economy has been the area concerned but several banks like UCBs, SCBs and CCBs do extend loans to semi-urban and urban regions. Role of government cannot be ignored as the cooperative banks get support, subsidy and seed funding from the government itself. An interest feature of these banks is that they operate in both money market as well as capital market. Cooperative banking structure is a well integrated one with less focus on competition. The cooperative banks receive funding from central government, RBI, NABARD, ownership funds, deposits and debenture issues and other cooperative institutions. Following a federal structure, the cooperative banks operate at state, district and village level. Some of these banks are also scheduled banks. Banks here are subjected to cash reserve ratio and statutory liquidity ratio maintenance requirements of 3% and 25% respectively. 
Now we will discuss the scenario of cooperative banking in India. Instability in the financial sector is a major concern faced by banks today. Rising risk of sourcing investments due to diversification of asset profile has alarmed the central banks across the globe. Recessionary pressures of the economy have also been felt by the banking sector due to rise in the non-performing assets and a reversal of profitability. Such concerns also exist for the cooperative banks at large. In 2001 and 3, the net profit to asset ratio of UCBs was negative and that of SCBs and CCBs was negligible. The mandatory minimum capital to risk weighted asset ratio CRAR of 9% was maintained by 88% of the UCBs in 2012-13. The total NPAs of SCBs in 2011-12 were around rupees 5200 crore as compared to rupees 2443 crore in 1998 and Rs. 4,485 crore in 2002. The performance of SCBs by far has shown notable recovery as compared to other cooperative banks. In 2001-03, the net profit to asset ratio of UCBs was negative and that of SCBs and CCBs was negligible. The mandatory minimum capital to risk weighted asset ratio that is CRAR of 9% was maintained by 88% of UCBs in 2012-13. Asset quality has been stable as the return on asset has fallen from one3 one three percent in 2011-12 to 1.09 percent in 2012-13. Gross NPA amounted to rupees one one zero 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 crore throughout 2011-12 and 2012-13, although. The gross NPA as a ratio of overall assets fell by a percentage point to 6% in 2013. NPAs of UCBs have increased considerably from around rupees 2839 crore in 1998 to rupees 11,000. 472 crores in 2002. NPA as a ratio of total loans outstanding also followed the similar pattern of that is of 13.2% to 21.3%. One should also take into consideration the fact that the overall asset base and the advances have also increased substantially over these years. Provisions for these NPA assessed through provisioning coverage ratio that is PCR increased to 77.3% in 2013. The total NPAs of SCBs in 2011-12 were around 5200 crore as compared to rupees 2443 crore in 1998 and rupees 4485 crore in 2002 the ratio of npa as a ratio of loans rose from 12.5% in 1998 to 13.4% in 2002 with slight decline in between but fell to 6.8% in 2012. 
one factor behind such a trend could be attributed to the rise of net profits by 155.9% in 2011-12. The performance of SCBs by far has shown notable recovery as compared to other cooperative banks. DCCBs accumulated NPAs to the tune of rupees 154000 zero 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 crore in 2012, which has steadily increased since 1998 at around rupees 5551 crore. NPA to loan ratio was also constantly high at more than 17% since 1998, but fell to 9.7% in 2012. Net profits saw a rise of 42.7% in 2012. Now we will discuss some of the difficulties faced by cooperative. Failures of PACs has been a major setback to the entire link of cooperative lending. Small size, lack of coverage and mismanagement has resulted into reorganization of PACS. They also failed to generate borrowings due to low loan repayment by members, lack of security provision, etc. Excessive leverage to the commercial banks has resulted into adverse effects of competition on cooperatives. Cooperative banks also fail to mobilize their deposits and rely heavily on RBI, NABARD and government. Loan waiver schemes in times of distress to farmers at times lead to disincentivization of loan payment during normal situations. Government has been criticized for intervention in operations of these cooperatives along with formulation of stringent regulatory framework. Lack of standardized business model and risk management systems. Poor human capital and aging staff profile characterized by inadequate qualification and training. The Khusro committee advised the creation of dependency between the long-term and short-term institutions through accountability, supervision and guidance. Aims of the policies was also to focus towards self-reliance. Recommendations included setting up of a National Cooperative Bank of India, NCBI, which takes the responsibility of competing with the commercial banks and circulate funds between different cooperatives and government institutions. Following are the major reforms in cooperative banking. Reorganization of PACS on gross cropped area basis and amalgamation of six cooperative units. 15-point program implemented in 16 pilot project districts. In 1987, 175 CCBs and 7 SCBs were rehabilitated due to weakness which faced difficulties later. The cooperative banking reforms of 1991 brought following reforms. Liberalization of licensing policy of UCBs. Constitution of NCBI in 1931 with equity capital of rupees 100 crore and with access to foreign equity. Setting up of Cooperative Development Fund by NABARD. Deregulation of interest rates of cooperative banks. Permission to PCBs to invest surplus funds in equity bonds of financial institutions and in certificates of deposits issued by scheduled commercial banks. PCBs to provide equipment leasing and higher purchasing financing facilities. Vedinathan Committee was set up in 2013 which recommended certain policies. Vedinathan Committee was set up in 2013 to examine the three-tire short-term cooperative credit structure. The aim was to look into the functioning if these institutions and their sustainability in long run. The emphasis was also on reorganization of SIG cooperatives along with the protection of stakeholders' interests. 
the committee recommended the following points. CCBs to provide at least 70% loans to agriculture. SCBs which cater to smaller population in urban areas with negligible agricultural lending should be declared as UCBs. CCBs to issue with permission from RBI 10-year fixed interest deposits with 5-year lock-in and to use them as Tier 1 capital. ICT and human resource concerns to be stressed across all cooperatives. SCBs and CCBs to provide RTGS, NEFT, ATM and POS services. They also achieved a target of 7% CRAR. Let us now recapitulate what we have studied in this module. Cooperative banks and their existence can be traced back to 1904 with the emergence of Cooperative Societies Act of 1904. These institutions were set up with the intent of serving the rural institutions engaged in productive activities. The main concern was to provide a setup to solve the issues related to agriculture financing and credit and to eliminate the long existing unorganized money market which exploited the rural, rural poor by charging exorbitant rates of interest. The cooperative banks are not profit oriented and operate at break even situation. Working of a cooperative bank is totally similar to that of a commercial bank with exact facilities of deposits, loans, remittance and credit made available to the participants. Later developments in cooperative banks include issue of housing and capital loans and advances against debentures and shares. A three-tier credit system set up at state, district and village level with the assistance from governments, RBI and NABARD. There were 93,000 550 rural cooperatives against 1,606 urban cooperatives, 92,432 PACS and 31 SCBs with 370 CCBs till 2013. The cooperatives function akin to a commercial bank with similar features but lack the vigor in terms of deposit and lending. Rising NPAs and falling profitability has forced the government to implement the corrective measures from time to time which include restructuring of capital requirements, amalgamation or merger of underperforming institutions. The Khusro committee advised the creation of dependency between the long term and short term institutions through accountability, supervision and guidance. Aim of the policies was also to focus towards self-reliance. Recommendations included setting up of National Cooperative Bank of India that is NCBI which takes the responsibility of competing with the commercial banks and circulate funds between different cooperatives and government institutions. Vedyanathan committee was set up in 2013 to examine the three tire short term cooperative credit structure. The aim was to look into the functioning of these institutions and 
their sustainability in long run. The emphasis was also on reorganization of SIC cooperatives along with the protection of stakeholders' interests. 